just tuning in with the body. Do you feel tension anywhere in your body? Just in my solar plexus, uh, I wouldn't describe it as tension. It's like, I don't even know, like, it's kind of tingling. I don't know. It's like just a, a sensation is there. So what is it that you need to know about this? I just see the word confidence. Yeah, I just see like in big, bold letters, I just see the word confidence. As I said that too, I just took like a couple more deep breaths. And as I felt it, wow, I can see this word confidence. It's like breathing confidence over yourself, like breathing life into yourself. And as I do that, it just makes me feel like really good doing that. So I think confidence is actually something that a lot of people are struggling with right now. And you were saying to just breathe in confidence. Can you explain how why this is helpful? Yeah, so I'm doing it right now. And what it really feels like is, or what I'm seeing now, is you got to breathe life into yourself. Like, and I'm I'm just doing it as a while I'm saying this, just like breathing into myself. I don't know how to describe it, but it's like directing the breath to different parts of you. So how I'm doing it now is I'm breathing into all of me at once. But if that's not really possible, you can do it for body part by body part. I love that. Yeah. So. Why is breath so important? Because breath is life. Breath has the ability to calm. Breath has the ability to create. Breath has the ability to make what it isn't is, you know? When Okay, now they're showing me the phrase, like, take my breath away. Like when someone says, that took my breath away. What do they mean when they say that? When you say that, you kind of give your life away. How many, how many things in your life do you allow to take your breath away? And when you allow those things to take your breath away, do you ever take the time to breathe that life back into yourself. So a lot of people are walking around like with their gas tank empty, if you want to put it that way, and not taking the time to breathe life back into themselves. And I feel like this message probably came to me today because I've been, you know, experiencing a lot right now. And I think I've allowed someone to take my breath away and I'll even take it a step further and say that I've allowed this person to take my voice away as well. And now it's like putting that all back into myself, like reclaiming, calling my energy back to me. That's so interesting because growing up, like if somebody took your breath away, that was usually a compliment. So is this like something that's been distorted? Yeah, there are a lot of phrases within the English language that hmm, the what I'm seeing is like curse you, like hex you. So it's like these phrases are so common that we don't ever really break down the words that we're saying so that when we say these words we let them out of our mouth it's like we are essentially putting ourselves at a disadvantage i think it's not emphasized enough how important words are and how important speaking positively about yourself and to others is so something like 
you know, somebody saying they took my breath away, you know, usually that dealt with someone being like really beautiful or that's how I um, have heard it in my life. It's like you see somebody that's, you know, so beautiful or even just has a lot of charisma or personality, you say, they took my breath away. But it's like, you know, why would you give your breath, which is your life away, you know? And a lot of times when people have described relationships like that, it's usually like a whirlwind, you know, very intense kind of relationship where, you know, some people do lose themselves that way. So I don't know why they wanted to emphasize um, that phrase in particular. But yeah, now I'm seeing the phrase sweep me off my feet. And I guess they want to, maybe it's not necessarily those phrases in particular, but just phrases in general and how these phrases are taking your, your breath. These phrases are taking life away from you. So let me see what they mean by somebody sweeping you off your feet. Is it because we've been conditioned to almost like worship a beauty? Yeah, and as you say that, like Medusa immediately shows up in my mind. And I think, you know, in our society, you know, we live in America, in our society, money is a very powerful currency, is a very powerful energy. But beauty is also currency as well. Hmm. So why did you get an image of Medusa? What does she symbolize? So I'm seeing two things. It's like she's the opposite side of the coin of beauty. And she's also like a representation of the currency of beauty. Because if I'm not, like, if I'm not mistaken, like, her myth was about her, her, like, being this beautiful person. But if you looked at her, you, you turned into stone. I believe that's how her story went. Or at least, like, the myth, I don't know, like, her full... Um, her full story. So it's like she literally took people's breath away, you know? You can't breathe as a stone, you know? So I guess maybe that's, they wanted to convey that message even further using her imagery. Yeah, that's really interesting. It's cool how it all came together. Mm -hmm. So why was it when you looked at Medusa, you would turn into stone? I see the word vanity. And hmm, I don't know if this is a part, like an actual part of her mythology. But what I'm seeing is that when people looked at her as like, it wasn't everybody that just, you know, happened to look at her. It was you were looking at her as like as like an object like you were objectifying her that's that's what it is it's like you were looking at her as this like like i don't know like piece of meat like you know when you're on the street and like guys are being like kind of creepy and stuff it's kind of like that like people didn't look at her for who she is for her soul for what she had to offer but they looked at her as like something to take advantage of almost so it's like she developed that power to you know like ice the people that were trying to take from her so i i don't know i'm seeing it now as like she's the ultimate representation of i'm not gonna let anyone take breath away from me I'm not going to let anybody take my voice. I'm not going to let anybody 
um, like take take my breath away, take my life away. You know, she's the ultimate symbolism of being grounded within yourself, of being confident. And um, again, anybody in the comments or anything can feel free to correct me if I'm wrong and also trigger warning. But I think um, people get her tattoo if they've been through like assault. Um, I, yeah, I think that's a thing that people get like Medusa tattoos if they've been assaulted. And now it, it's making me think like, you know, when you go through that assault, somebody takes from you, you know, they, they take your, they take your, um, they take your breath, they take your, your life, a part of your life at least from you. So it's almost like getting that tattoo of hers, like stamping yourself to say, I'm reclaiming that part of me. I call back all of my energy. Yeah, that's amazing because I was um uh, I googled Medusa like right as you brought up her name, and the first thing that came up was Medusa tattoo. So it's so yeah. interesting. Yeah, and I wonder where that like started too because it's interesting. Maybe that person also um had the same feeling or came to the same conclusion, but I don't know if there was any kind of assault in her mythology but i guess when we get off this call i'll i'll look into her because i you know people whenever we do these channelings people always come through for a reason so i want to see more about her story yeah i think it's so important for the collective at this time what the collective is going through so does she want to come in does she have any messages for the collective today She's like eager. She's like, oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Okay, so she's, I see the word um, eclipse. And I guess the, uh, not the eclipse, but what is it tomorrow? Is it the solstice? The solstice. Equinox? What is it? It's the solstice, right? I'm pretty sure it's the solstice. Yeah, like I said eclipse because they're just showing me the the moon and the sun like dancing. So I just chalk that up to eclipse, but I know the uh, like you said, the solstice is tomorrow. And I think there's something about the energy of the solstice that a lot of people might have been feeling like a heaviness. Um, especially around this time or this week. And even with Christmas being next week and a lot of people might be traveling back home or just having to be around family that they might not be necessarily comfortable with. So it does feel like an intense time, even though it's supposed to be like a happy, jolly time. You know, for a lot of people, it isn't that way. And I think even the weight of feeling like, well, this is a jolly time, but I don't feel jolly makes it even more intense. So I think that's why she wanted to come through is because she knows the intensity of the energies happening right now. And she really wants to like amplify, like do not let anybody take your joy. Don't let anybody take your breath away. You really, really need to ground yourself at this time. And I think solar plexus came up earlier is because, you know, when you hear grounded, you automatically think root. But for, for a lot of us, you know, a lot of your basic needs of root stability might already be satisfied, you know, so you're kind of calling in more energy from the root when the root is stabilized, you know, you might not have exactly what you want. You might not be all the way secure, but for a lot of people, I'm seeing for a lot of people that your root is, you know, neutral, it's stabilized. So it's like, they're showing me 
your solar plexus. Like you need to be grounded in your solar plexus. You need to be grounded in your confidence. You need to be grounded in your sense of self so that no one can tell you who you are. You already know who you are and you're unmoving in that, you know? And that's not to say that there's no room for change, but you need to establish who you are, establish your self-concept and be really firmly grounded in yourself so that when you are around these family members that may try to bring up your past or try to judge you for things that you've done before or try to bring you back to that small child that you were, you won't be as affected because you'll be grounded in your in your confidence, in your self-concept, in your sense of self. So I'm seeing also that she is kind of um, like a ruler of the solar plexus. So I think that's a, another reason why she wanted to come through today too. So if you need to call on someone for that like extra boost of confidence, you know, feel free to call on her and ask her to help you out with your confidence. And it's like crazy because when we first started, I told you like my root, I mean, sorry, my solar plexus felt like a little bit uneasy, but like having her presence here now, like I feel good. Like I feel like really good now. Is it also about like shining light onto your inner beauty and not your outer beauty? Yeah, confidence. You can say confidence is your inner beauty. You know, like confidence isn't um, like an outfit that you wear or a hairstyle that you do or like um, makeup that you put on, but you can still see confidence on someone. So it's like you ground yourself in this confidence and it's so bright that it shows on you, you know? You can see confidence on someone. So for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Is there anything else that she wanted to talk about today? I don't know why I just see the word lavender. So I guess maybe if you want to burn some lavender, I've never done that before, but maybe that could be a thing for you or for anyone listening. If you want to burn some lavender or I'm also seeing if you decide to light a candle, you can put some lavender around it. Um, if you put it inside of the candle, just make sure that it's not too close to the wick. But yeah, if lavender resonates for anybody, um, I'm just seeing that here as well. I don't know the exact symbolism of lavender. I'm seeing, okay, so as I say that, I'm seeing like purity, like tranquility, like very calming stuff. So I guess it's like if your solar plexus feels like really um, out of sorts and really needs some calming, that lavender can really be like, like aromatherapy. I'm seeing like lavender is good for the solar plexus. And even if you don't have like actual lavender, if you have like a lavender essential oil and a diffuser, that would be really nice too. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for Medusa coming in. Those were beautiful messages.